guys are probably wondering, Shadiah, I thought you said the next video would be the Christmas tree. I thought you said we were finally doing the Christmas tree. Well, it's not that I lied. <laughs> I got busy. I'm making this video by the grace of God. So as you can see from the title, guys, we are doing a little... What, what would we call this? A skincare Q&A, but not about skincare. Like a chit-chat Q&A? I don't know. Anyways, first thing I want to do, I'm going to put this thing on my head. My head's kind of big, so I hope it... I hope it fits. It's kind of tight. Ah, ah, ah. Okay. okay. Wait. Do I cover my ears? I think this is good. I can't see. Let me see. Is this fine? Ah, my earrings. Okay. Okay, this is fine. Okay. So we're gonna do, I posted a question um, thing on my Instagram so people could ask me questions. So thank you for everybody who contributed to that. So the first question is, what is your biggest fear? Also, the first thing that I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be washing my face with Panoxyl Acne Foaming Wash. If you don't have it, get it. It's like the best acne wash ever. This and my step two, but we'll get there. My biggest fear... It's a given, first of all, faith over fear, period. But my biggest fear is me getting, me like dying and getting to heaven gates and saying, and Jesus saying, depart from me before I never knew you. It's like, I'm not gonna lie, it would suck to live a life for God. And then God's like, yo, what? You didn't really live for me. You pretended to live for me. Or you thought that I stood with you in those times, but I was really against you and you want this thing to conviction. That is like my biggest fear. But, you know, if you stay in Christ, that should just be, you know, that's not a fear. That's just the devil trying to get into your head. But I also think that scripture, that scripture serves as like a, a reality check for us that like we're not perfect and, oh my God. That we're not perfect and like we just really need to stay in Jesus and as long as we're living for him, and not just saying, oh yeah, we're saved and we pray. And actually like acting on his convictions and the convictions he gives us. And also like just being good Christians by bearing good fruit. And I think that that should be gone, you know, that it's not really a fear. Number two, how do you know if someone is operating in the Holy Spirit? Um, so step two is actually CeraVe hydrating facial cleanser for normal to dry skin. I used to use the one for oily skin until I realized I have dry skin, so I started using this one. And it doesn't foam as much, which is like less satisfying, but it does work. <laughs> we were just talking about this in the Bible study. You know, we can't be led astray by wolves in sheep's clothing. How do you know? You have to discern. Use discernment, you know. Um, good trees bear good fruit and bad trees bear bad fruit. So if someone is telling you that, like, I've had encounters with people who are prophesying over my life and they're like, you know, this, that, and the third. But you realize that they asked you a couple questions before they gave you that prophecy. Or like my ex-boyfriend had this friend who claims to be a prophet. He didn't even know me five seconds. He's like, oh, you guys will have a baby boy together, but the Lord wants you guys to be married. And da da da, da. And I'm like, first of all, I don't know you. <laughs> like, you came out of nowhere, gave me this prophecy. I say this because like, and so I think you just have also ask God. That's how you know if somebody's operating in the Holy Spirit. You ask God, you say, God, like, yo, show me if this person is not operating in the Holy Spirit. Um, when it comes to friends, relationships, pastors, leaders, just anybody, ask God. 
you have to know a tree by its fruit because you can't tell me you're leading me in and you're preaching to me something but you're acting completely different so i'm heavy on practice with you, what you preach which is why i come and i tell you guys what i'm going through like hey you know i think i need to be bearing better fruit or hey i need to i'm not ready for leadership yet so i'm stepping down from youtube for a minute like i come and i tell you guys these things because i don't want you for me to be practice preaching one thing to you guys but you guys are seeing me practicing something completely different from what i'm preaching dry my face because because I want to do a face mask now obviously I don't do face masks every time I wash my face my skin has high key been breaking out um I sleep with my dog so I think that that like, like that goes into it am I gonna stop sleeping with my dog no my dog is my emotional oh he's like my baby that's my child I'm like what so the third question is who is Jesus to you I'm going to be using this Freeman Clearing Peel Off Clay Mask, um, Sweet Tea and Lemon. I also have this like face mask applicator from the Dollar General, Dollar Tree, go get that. This is the difference between having a relationship with God or saying you know God, but then having a relationship with Jesus. Jesus is my best friend. He is my brother. He's my sister. He is my everything my rock my fortress my refuge like without god i am nothing he's my savior my redeemer without god i would not be who i am today i would not have any of these good quality traits that people seem to point out i'm not talking about like physical traits i'm talking about character traits i would not be anything without jesus jesus is my best friend like there's nothing that I'm going through that I cannot go to Jesus about that's like I say that's why I tell people I'm like I'm like oh like I'm not religious I am I prioritize my relationship with Jesus Christ and then people are like oh but you are really no I'm not religious I prioritize my relationship with Christ my Savior he's my firm foundation the rock on which I stand what the song says when everything around me shaken I've never been more glad that I put my trust in Jesus because Jesus literally always works it out like he's alive. Like, oh, I could get into a rant about this. I could talk about this for hours. Like, I can't explain to you who Jesus is without, I like, go watch my testimony. My testimony is proof that God is real. Um, he's like literally my savior. In times of need where the people that I love fail me, where my, my mother has failed me, where my father has failed me, where my grandmother has failed me, where my uncle has failed me, where my brothers and sisters have failed me. Jesus is, is, Jesus is my everything. He is my everything. He is my everything. There's this new song that my friend put me on to. It's like, Jesus, when you call my name, I will answer a billion times over. A billion times over. Because you know why? Because I call his name and he'll answer a billion times. God is so good. That's who Jesus is for me. Not only is Jesus all of those things, but he's also the best lawyer, the best judge, the best doctor, the best, like, he's just the best. next question is what are you learning in your walk with God at the moment and I'll be putting some black castor oil on my face for the sake of my face I am learning how to love people that are hard to love um the spirit of offense is so like present when people continue to hurt you and you just kind of sit there with that so yeah you, you are forced to forgive them because you have to you have no choice but like deep down in your heart there's still like well I'm, I'm gonna say I can't say you are deep down in my heart there's still that like pull of like oh my gosh like why is this person treating me like this or I don't deserve this and what I can say is that God is teaching me how to love not just like romantically 
but like just on the whole like how to love but also how to practice love in times where we don't really want to practice love and we want to be Peter but I gotta stop calling that over my life because I'd be saying I'm Peter too much until I actually like anyways this is the cast on my own stage like okay the next question is what's a big noticeable change from your walk with God since one year ago obedience heavy on obedience and that's not even a year that's just the other day I would know God would speak to me and tell me no don't do that no don't do that no don't do that and you know what I would do I would do that I was not obedient to the will of God or like anything like he would tell me to not do things and I would think I know better or not even just like know better I would just not listen like to be now I am trying to be obedient to the Lord and if he tells me no I've learned that God is telling me no for a reason and we have time for one more question even though our face is completely done the last question is name a moment you'll never forget and I'm glad that this is a question because honestly like this one moment just pops up into my head me and my really really close friend were at this Christian music like concert thing and we were also evangelizing and so we were going out and we ended up talking to this one girl my friend had got a vision like oh like we need to go chase it. we literally chased down this girl like we should go talk to her but by the time we figured out we were gonna go talk to her she was already like a good distance away and my friend she's like and my friend's like oh like you know we should leave it I'm like nah like we're gonna go get her like so we ended up running down this girl to evangelize to her and we ended up talking to her and she really needed that she took our social media and she was with her boyfriend and like two kids or whatever I don't think those were her kids like those were like her siblings or whatever and so after we evangelized to them, I just start feeling really down, like about myself, my identity, how I look, etc., etc. I just start feeling like extremely down, like, and I'm sitting there and I text in our group chat, pray for me, I like, and I just she came to me, and actually she got a phone call. We're laying on the grass. She got a phone call. She goes to answer the phone and she steps away from the music because it was pretty loud and so I'm sitting there and I'm like down about and like ready to just not be alive anymore not like it wasn't even like it wasn't even like oh I'm suicidal I just was not feeling like good I was feeling very like iffy about my I just wasn't feel I wasn't feeling loving towards myself okay I'm just sitting in the grass or whatever and see the devil's a liar I rebuke Satan he doesn't want me to tell you guys this story um yeah so she steps away to go take a call and I don't even know what the call's about or whatever I'm just sitting there and while she's gone I text in our group chat I'm like hey guys pray for me um I didn't put no specifics I'm just like pray for me and you could tell I was down and I remember posting on my Instagram story in that same, like, second, like, me laying there with, like, a heartbreak emoji. And she didn't even see it or anything. She came back, and she realized I was down, and she just starts speaking life into me. She's like, girl, whatever it is bothering you, just know it's the lies of the enemy, and this, that, and the third. And the devil's mad that we're, like, we're um, evangelizing, and I feel like we touched that girl that, like, broke my pores are raising as I'm talking to you about this. Like, my, um... The devil's mad that we're touching people and we're, we're out here doing the purpose. And when I tell you, every time me and this friend get together, bro, the devil is so mad because we really end up like touching somebody. We like we end up walking in the walk in the Holy Spirit and we let the Lord lead us. And so we end up talking to people and preaching to people and just like changing lives. And we're like, oh, let's pray. So right there in that moment when I'm feeling down, I'm literally like crying at this point. And people are around me, but not, like, looking at me. We're just in the grass. It was dark and, like, like a festival, a music festival. And people are, like, oh, um, you know, doing their own thing. And so we're there. And she's, like, oh, let's pray. So she bows her head. She starts praying. She's, like, and we just start praying for this situation. And then eventually she's, like, and then I start praying. And then she's, like, 
she starts praying and we're like back and forth praying and they're praying at the same time she's like oh the lord is telling me we need to pray for that girl that we just evangelized to blase like her boyfriend is mad the lord gave my friend a vision and so we just start praying and i'm talking about to the point where we don't even care who is around us it's a christian music festival but we scream it in tongues like i'm pr like we're just praying so hard for this girl's life and just for everything in the situation I open our eyes, I open my eyes while we were praying and I see somebody like walk by and take a picture of us and like people around us were like looking at us like what is going on but it was a Christian thing so it wasn't like they're crazy it was more like like it was just like wow like look at the power of God and so I will never forget that because I feel like this is one of the first this is the first time I've prayed in public and um loud and I was walking in the spirit in public like that like like, it was just crazy. You had to be there to witness the presence of God. Like, we were there praying and crying. And this is high key in the middle of, like, a grassy field where people were praising and worshiping for the Christian concert. So, I will never forget that. But that is that is the end of this video, guys. Um, I can't say tomorrow, the Christmas tree, because, hey... <laughs> I don't want to lie to y'all again but thank you so much for watching this video make sure you like comment subscribe and don't forget to hit the post notification bell so you know when i drop again for vlogmas day six yeah day six bye